Hey everyone, Chris here and welcome to my channel. As you can see by my setup, it's time to play phase 10, chooses my TBR. So it is the 28th and I have two books left for my TBR last month. And that is Charmed, which I should easily be able to finish, and The Ninth Rain. I'm like 160 pages into that book. It's 550 pages. I'm hoping to finish it. If not, then Editing Crest will pop in and show you the prompt I have to fill to make up for the fact that I didn't read that. But I am hopeful that I'm going to finish it, so I'm not actually going to pull a punishment right now. As for books outside of my prompts, I obviously will have my nonfiction, my series that I'm going to continue, which I will get to in just a second. I'm still doing Buzzwordathon. I'm hoping to read the sequel to The Ninth Rain if I like it for the Backlist Book Club, and I am partaking in Questathon. This is a month-long readathon based, I think, loosely on Lord of the Rings, and it is hosted by Sahar from Basically Bookish Reads. I will link her channel and the announcement video in the description below if you want to check it out. I will be posting a separate TBR video for that because I'm hoping that there will be a lot of crossover between my Phase 10 TBR and that one. And I'm hoping for a slightly slower reading month in July, considering I think as it stands right now, I've read like 54 books and I don't think I'll hit quite 60, but I've read plenty of books in the month of June and I'm hoping for a slightly less hectic reading month in July, which means I will probably be getting like three wilds. So <laughs> that would be just my luck. Last month I wanted all the wilds and to get any, I'm expecting to get wilds this month because I don't want them. Anyways, let's jump into the few things I need to take care of before we get to the game. So for nonfiction, I'm going to read The Weather Machine, A Journey Inside the Forecast, and I am very curious to see what this teaches me about the weather. I like learning new things and weather in particular scares me. So I'm hoping maybe I will learn some stuff about weather and forecasting and stuff like that that maybe will put some of my fears to ease or make my anxiety easier to manage when a weather issue does come up. So yeah, with my nonfiction taken care of, let's move on to my TBR jar. So here it is. It is updated, though I don't know specifically to today, because I think I might have started a series since I last updated this, which was like a few days ago. I have read so much that it's hard to keep track of, but I do know what's in here and I will be able to update my spreadsheet accordingly. So there will be new series in here next month. I know I have finished some series that are in here, so I may end up having to pull multiple ones. I know I've DNF some series that are in here. So let's see what I get. get the lid off. And Paper Palooza. We'll go with this yellow one. What do we got here? There's no way to do this without it overflowing, this red one. This orange one. I'll pick those up once I'm done because these could be duplicates. Well, not duplicates of each other, but like ones I can't use. So the first series I pulled was the yellow one and that is, okay. Cordelia Hatmaker by Tamsin Merchant. I am caught up in this series. I'm not sure there is going to be more in this series because the way the back of the book of the second book in the series read made it sound like it was a duology but I'm not sure so I'm keeping it in there for now. I will pick another one and we will go with oh another yellow one as more pieces of paper fall to the floor and I got Kingdoms and Empires by Jacqueline Moriarty. I have to go look this one up. So my library does have this. The second book is The Slightly Alarming Tales of the Whispering War. I'll pop a picture of it up here. In the first book, we're following Bronte Metalstone, and I believe she lives with her aunt and ends up getting sent on a quest by her parents' will to deliver gifts to the rest of the aunts in her family. I think dad's sisters, and she has to do it alone, and we follow along on her journey, and lots of interesting things happen. I have no idea what happens in book two, but I enjoy book one, so I am totally down to continue this series and it's middle grade, which should mean it is hopefully easier to read. So my second series was this red one here and I got, ooh, this one I'm good with. Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard by Rick Riordan. 
The second book in this series is The Hammer of Thor. In this series, we're following Magnus Chase, who ends up finding out he is the descendant of a god of Asgard, and it's very Norse mythology-inspired, which should not be surprising that there is mythology involved in a Rick Riordan book. I really enjoy book one, and I'm totally down to rebook two, so thumbs up for that. And then this orange one is... Kingdom of Bones by Kimberly Vale. So this is a newer one, and I don't know if book two's out yet. Because I believe I read this this year. Okay, I'm right. Dark Tides, which is book two, does not come out until October, so I can't read that right now, obviously. So let's pull out something else, and we'll go with this purple one. As more pieces of paper fall on the floor, I'm really surprised the cats that are in here aren't going after them. Okay, this is Ark of the Scythe by Neil Schusterman. This is a series I have DNF'd. I read the first two. Didn't really enjoy either one of them. And I've heard from a lot of people who did enjoy the first two that they didn't like the third one. So I decided I was going to DNF the series. So we'll try again. And this one will not be going back in the jar because obviously I'm not going to read the end of the series. Ooh, another, another purple one. Adventures on Trains by Sam Sedgman and M.G. Leonard. So I know that the third book is out. It's just a matter of whether it's out in the United States. It is. I checked my library. They have it. I was allowed to request it, which means it is not considered new and popular or something like that. There is a rule with my library system that there are certain copies of books that can only be borrowed from that specific library for like the first six months. And this one is not considered that. So I can totally continue that. In this series, we follow a boy named Hal who goes on adventures on trains with his uncle. And he's really good at drawing. And there is usually some sort of mystery. In the first one, there was a theft. In the second one, there was a kidnapping. I'm assuming, considering this is got murder in the title, that there's going to be a murder. And he's somehow going to use his drawing scales to help sleuth out who done it. So I really enjoyed the first two books in the series and I'm totally down to read book three. So those are the three series that I'm going to be reading in the month of July and I get to put this away until August. Now with all of that out of the way I have my prompt pile, my die, which I will probably end up needing unfortunately, and my cards and let's get into the game. Draw number one is a blue seven. I do not need a blue seven because I'm going for ones or a four or nine, because I have my run of four. So blue seven is not needed. And the prompt for blue seven is mom pick. So the four books I'm going to give to my mom to choose from are The Castle of Tangled Magic by Sophie Anderson. I've absolutely loved the first two books I've read by her and would love to read more. So this is one of the ones I want to read. The Story Web by Megan Fraser Blakemore. This is a spring cover. I'm aware we're in summer. I am massively behind on these, so I want them on my TBR. I'm going to be trying to get to it in July anyway, so I might as well give it to her as an option. And then the two I don't are Red Sister by Mark Lawrence. I had gotten this out of the library as it was one of the host faves, and I do plan to read it, but I don't necessarily want it to be required reading because it's a chunky YA or adult fantasy. I'm not sure, but either way, I want to not be required to read this this month and then the other is valor for the same reason i'm currently reading malice i have no idea if i'm going to enjoy malice enough to want to read valor but if she picks it i will read it um i do hope to read it i'm enjoying malice as far as i am into it i'm about halfway and that is why i requested valor from the library because i was hoping to get to it this month but again with it being an adult chunky fantasy i'd rather not have it on my tbr because then i can roll it over into August if I do start it in July, or I can just wait till August to read it if I need to. So those are going to be the four choices. I will pop a picture up of the book that my mom chose here. Hopefully she was nice to me. I don't know. I think maybe I will read her the first line of each book and make her choose that way because I think that would be a cool way to do it because she knows a little too much about what I want to read and I don't want her to intentionally choose a book that I want to read. I, I want it to be a fair, this one sounds the most interesting. And since she doesn't read fantasy or middle grade, I don't think she's going to want to choose any of those. So I think it would be cool to just give her the first 
line or the first like couple of lines and see which one she would pick. So those are going to be my mom's options. Draw number two is a four. I can use that. And I think, I think I'll go for the one. And because I have the, th I'm a dum-dum. So this one is supposed to go here. I bet you it fell at some point. Otherwise, why would it not be up there? Or I had it, and because I didn't want to put it up there anyways. I've got a four, which means I'm going to use the blue six. And I can put the three in front of it. So I've completed my phase. That was almost a very dumb move by me. Anyways, blue six. Blue six is my prompt. And for this, I will be reading a book with a map. So for Book with a Map, I'm going to read Bamboo Kingdom, River of Secrets. This is the second book in the Bamboo Kingdom series by Aaron Hunter. And we follow three pandas who I think had like a prophecy about them and they're going to have to do something. I don't know. It's been a while since I've read the first one, but I do remember enough details to start book two. And there is my map. I think every Aaron Hunter book has maps, so they're always a good show. I am really excited to get to this. I love Aaron Hunter's works, and I, I'm i trying to stay up to date on this series as it starts, as opposed to trying to catch up like I'm doing with Seekers and Survivors. So this is going to be what I read for Book with a Map. Okay, so since I've completed my phase, I need to redo this, so I will be back with you with a fresh board in just a second. Okay, as you can see, I have the board set up for the next phase. I need to get a run of four, which I've already gotten, and a set of four, I'm going for 12s. I also got to skip, which means at some point I can discard that and just completely skip that prompt. I don't have to pull any prompts off the board. I will probably hold on to that as long as humanly possible because it would be really handy in a wild card scenario where I have extra prompts. So with all that being said, I have shuffled all the cards back into the deck and mixed them up and we're going for draw number three. And it is a blue 11. And the prompt for Blue 11 is Cozy Mystery. So for this, I'm going to read Aunt Dimity's Death. This is a series I wanted to reread. There's like 26 books or some silly thing in the series. So in this series, we're following Lori and she ends up finding out that Aunt Dimity is not a story character like her mom had brought her up to believe, but a real life person. And she has to figure out the connection between Aunt Dimity and her mom. I've really enjoyed the series in the past, but there are other series I've read in the past that once I reread them when I was older from a different perspective, I realized had some not so great stuff in them. So I wanted to reread the series. So I will be reading Aunt Dimity's Death in the month of July to see if it holds up and is still a series I want to keep reading. It is also a cozy mystery series. I should probably mention that since the prompt was cozy mystery. So that is also why I'm picking it. Draw number four is a yellow six. And the prompt for yellow six is black hole. So this is a prompt I based on the TBR game that Stephanie from Stephanie's book verse plays. And basically she has TBR star hop and she goes on this board and there are black holes. And when she lands on one of the, well, black holes or wormholes, and when she lands on one of them, she has to pick a prompt out of like a TBR jar that has a lot of intimidating books or longer books or series to continue or whatever. So I have some of those in here. And I don't know if, if I'm going to be excited about reading whatever comes out of here. There is a possibility that some of these are outdated as in I've read them or decided I didn't want to read them or whatever, but I'm going to pick one. I know it's not complete because I haven't updated it in a while. I only updated it at the start of the year, but I'm going to give it a go and we'll go with this one. So I got Choose Your Own Autobiography by Neil Patrick Harris. Let me go grab that. So here we have it. It's obviously Neil Patrick Harris's autobiography and it is a little different as it's a choose your own adventure. And basically, when you get to the end of the chapter, it says, for instance, if you would like to experience a happy childhood, turn to page eight. If you would prefer to experience a miserable childhood that later in life you can claim to have heroically overcome, turn to page five. And at the end of each chapter, 
you get options like a choose your own adventure book when you were a kid. The reason this was in the black hole is because I've tried to read it before and ended up putting it down because of the choose your own adventure aspect. It just was so easy to to put down because I was making all these weird choices and as much as I love the choose your own adventure aspect as a child I don't know that it was working as well for me as an adult in this format because I'm somebody that wants to know that I've read every page and I'm assuming he's thought of that because I can't imagine that he doesn't have it set up so that at some point you read every page in the book but I guess I'm reading it in the month of July so that brings my total of nonfiction up to two. Draw number five is a red four. And the prompt for red four is over 500 pages. Absolutely not what I wanted this month. Well, for this, I'm going to go with Heart of Flames by Nikki Palpretto. This is the second book in, is it the Crown of Feather series? I know that's the first book. I don't know if that's the series name, but it is the sequel to Crown of Feathers. This was the series I pulled out of my TBR jar last month, and this was the book that I was on, but I didn't remember enough of the details from book one. I have now read book one, still really enjoyed it, very curious as to where we're going in book two, so I was planning to read it anyways, so I suppose it's not the worst thing in the world, but I would have preferred not to have to read any books over 500 for my TBR. But either way, I will be reading this, and hopefully I will enjoy it as much as I enjoyed book one. Draw number six is a blue five. And the prompt for blue five is light cover. So I think for this, I'm going to go with the weather machine. I know these are kind of darker, but like it's got a lot of light blues and whites and stuff on it. And like the yellows are light, so I think it's a mostly light cover. And again, my TBR game, my rules. I count this as a light cover, so I'm gonna go with it. This is my nonfiction of the month, so I'm gonna be reading it anyways. Might as well stick it on my TBR. Draw number seven is a yellow one. And the prompt for yellow one is mythology. So this is easy. I'm going to read The Hammer of Thor. It deals with Norse mythology. I was reading it anyway, so I might as well stick it on my TBR here. I had considered seeing if it was over 500 pages, and now I'm really, really glad that I didn't because, well, it works really well for this prompt. So that is going to be my book for mythology. Draw number eight is a red six. And the prompt for red six is finish a series. So for this, I'm going to read Dear Luna by Amber Crawley. This is the third book in the On Luna Time series, or the Luna Time series. I recently read book two and wanted to get to book three in a relatively timely manner. The first book follows a young girl named Vanessa who's been in foster care and ends up getting a note from her birth mom about jumping off of a pier. And she ends up doing it and travels through time. It's quite the interesting set up for a novel and I enjoyed the first two and would like to finish off the series. So that is what I will be reading for finish a series. Trying to figure that one out was a lot trickier than I thought it was going to be. I have a lot of series where I'm not at the final book or I don't have access to the final book, which is also tricky. Draw number nine is a blue three. And while normally I would hang on to this, I'm not going to because I want twelves and I don't want to accidentally mess things up by hanging on to this. So we're just going to go with a blue three over here. And for this, I've got BIPOC rep. So for this, I'm going to read The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead. And it says, Cora is a young slave on a cotton plantation in Georgia, an outcast even among her fellow Africans. She is on the cusp of womanhood where greater pain awaits. And so when Caesar, a slave who has recently arrived from Virginia, urges her to join him on the Underground Railroad, she seizes the opportunity and escapes with him. In Colson Whitehead's ingenious conception, the Underground Railroad is no mere metaphor. Engineers and conductors operate a secret network of actual tracks and tunnels beneath southern soil. Cora embarks on a harrowing flight from one state to the next, encountering, like Gulliver, strange yet familiar iterations of her own world at each step. As Whitehead brilliantly recreates the terrors of the antebellum era, he weaves in the saga of our nation from the brutal abduction of Africans to the unfulfilled promises of the present day. The Underground Railroad is the gripping tale of one woman's will to escape the horrors of bondage and a powerful meditation on the history we all share. 
I have heard really good things about this and I'm hoping that I enjoy it as much as the other people I've heard talk about this have enjoyed it. And for what is hopefully my final draw, which would be shocking because, well, I was really expecting more wilds than this. Draw number 10 is a blue one. How I managed to get through this entire month without any wilds is beyond me. But the prompt for blue one is animal on the cover. So for this, I'm going to read Murder on the Safari Star by M.G. Leonard and Sam Sedgman. As you can see by the picture of the cover here, there are animals all over it. So I definitely think that counts. And it is handy because it is already on my TBR. So the only other things I have to mention is my buzzword thumb pick. And I believe it is a bookish theme word. And I'm going to be reading Book Lovers by Emily Henry for this. I am really excited to get to this book as I've enjoyed... Is it People We Meet on Vacation and Beach Read? I tend to confuse her and Beth O'Leary. So... I think those are the two that are by Emily Henry. And then I also need to mention that I am buddy reading The Case of the Gypsy Goodbye and The Case of the Cryptic Crinoline, Crinoline? with Naomi from Naomi's Bookshelf. I'll link her channel below. These are the fifth and sixth, I believe. Yeah. Fifth and sixth books in the Enola Holmes series. We have been buddy reading it and... I'm hoping these two books go as well as the last two did because the last two had a really good mixture of character development, world building, and mystery. I was hoping to get them on my TBR, but it just didn't work out that way. But I'm going to be reading these in the month of July as well. So these are some of the books I'm going to be reading in the month of July. I would love to know a book you're planning on getting to in the month of July. All my social media, including my Discord, is linked in the description below if you'd like to come chat with me. If you've made it this far in the video, leave me weather emojis in honor of the weather machine. Like this video and subscribe to my channel and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!